All right, Dave's got questions. So let's see what his questions are. Wait, what? How do you have multiple huge fish tanks in the living room? Does Barb know about this? I thought your only kink was boxes of fluorescing radioactive rocks that Barb allowed you to keep in the garage. And what is that crazy Close Encounters third, third kind array of lights that I see reflected in the water of the sponge tank? Is there an alien spacecraft hovering up just above you? Do you have missing time? Look, Don't look up, that's how I get you. And then he ends up with, I apologize for all the questions. As, as well you should, as well you should. Alright, so... Believe it or not, the, the, the fish tanks were actually Barb's idea. Um, so this is a house built in the 1950s. And it's, you know, uh, kind of just a ranch style. Uh, with a nice picture window right there. And um, it's got nice stone, stone work in the middle and then brick on, on either side. But this is um, considered a mid-century modern house in terms of its design. And mid-century modern kind of had a spare look to it. And sort of wide open spaces, kind of Frank Lloyd Wright-ish type of thing. And so like this living room here, you walk in, it's like, whoa, it's like goes deep. And then they put a mirror on the other end here. So it looks even, even bigger than it actually is, as if it wasn't big enough. So, hey, hey, there I am. Look at that guy. All right, and so we've got this, this nice long living room, and one of the features of mid-century modern homes was planters. And that's what these are. These are planters. Now, if you look online and look up, like, indoor planters, sometimes they'll be made out of brick. These are actually made out of, like, these nice stone brick, the same kind that was on the outside of the house. And so that's pretty cool. Now when we came in they had plastic plants in them and so that's what, what sometimes what people would do is put plastic plants in. And in this case, um, you know, there's a picture window but it's way over there. And so the proximity of the planters to the picture window is not real great. The first idea was to have a, an herb garden here. It had to be this elaborate hydroponic system with a, an ebb and flow using a bell siphon. And so right here there was this right about here sticking up above there was this crate or bin I guess um, full of, of rocks and then the herbs are growing straight out of the rocks and we had a grow light above it. This is this is also a grow light right here. We got from Home Depot. It's made from LEDs and they're different color LEDs. It's like red and blue and which is good for growing I guess. Um, but we had a different grow light above that and <clears throat> down below this was full of water and the water would siphon would, would pump up to the upper bin and then siphon down and I, I fiddled around with it for a long time and never could get it to work really well. Um, turns out the difference between the upper bin and the lower bin in order, in order to siphon properly has to be greater than we really wanted to, to do it. So you know, that did not work out so well. So we ended up dismantling that. And so we gave up because what, we what we were doing was hydroponics where you just add some nutrients to the water, but we eventually wanted to get it to be aquaponics. Which is, you know, you grow lettuce or herbs or food or, you know, some kind of food plant. And then there's fish in the lower tank where the water comes from. And then the fish uh, fertilize the plants with their fish droppings. And it's like a, a complete ecosystem. And then you you, you, know, you eat the herbs, and then you eat the fish, and then you grow more fish, and, and so on and so forth. So we, we never got that far. So we gave up on the, the green solution type of thing, and just decided, hey, we'll just make a, a little indoor pond out of this. And even though we're not eating anything here, um, we're still trying to make it more or less self-sufficient. We have a, a deep sand bed. Uh, the, the deep sand bed allows anaerobic bacteria 
to uh, to live down in it, and that will help filter the water, and you know, biofiltering rather than mechanical filtering. So, like, the, it starts as, as ammonia, and then the bacteria changes the ammonia to nitrites, and then the uh, other bacteria tra change the nitrites to nitrates. And out of those three, nitrates are the, the least harmful, and that's also what feeds the plants. So if you have enough plants in here, you should hardly ever have to do water changes. And so we wanted something different for this pond over here, and so we decided on the salt water setup. I'm going to turn the blue off because it, it tends to really... There we go. It tends to really uh, blew up the camera here. All right. Um, oh yeah, the alien thing. So that is, this is something I didn't realize. This is a specialized reef light, and I didn't realize that having it hovering right above the water like this would cause a reflection. And like, you know, you go in there and try to look at the animals, and you got all these these lights reflecting at you. So this is the white light portion of the reef light. There's there's two different setups. There's the white light and the blue light. So there's no light. There's the blue light. Now if you look at the blue light, hope, I don't know if this will show up on the camera, but there's actually different colors of blue. And this is referred to as the actinic part of the spectrum. And it, it simulates what you get further down in the ocean away from the sunlight. You, know, you get nothing much less except for blues, although you know, that far down. Um, and so it's, it's simulating those various types of blues, including ultraviolet. And then you have the white light in addition to that. And then you, you balance them the best you can so that uh, it looks, looks right. Uh, so does that cover all of Dave's questions? I hope so. I can't think of anything else.